Okay, so you've written your book and you've even gone ahead and published it on KDP. Great, but what about publishing wide? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to publish a book wide with this drafted digital tutorial, so stick around. Hey, Write Writers, Keith Wheeler here. And if you wanna to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash that little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out some new content. draft to digital or D2D, is one of my favorite platforms for going wide. The reason is because D2D is an aggregate publisher, meaning you upload it to one place, draft to digital and then draft to digital will send it out to dozens of different outlets based on the selections that you made when you set up. Well, enough of this talk. How about I flip the screen around and I'll show you exactly what I mean with this step-by-step -step tutorial. Well, here we are on drafttodigital.com. Um, I've already logged in. If you don't have an account, feel free to set it up. It's absolutely free. The sign up is quite intuitive, so you don't really need me to walk you through it. Like I said, I'm logged in. I'm gonna go to my books. Okay, and as you can see right now, I have three books in here. Um, actually, Hit Like a Girl isn't completely set up yet, um, but we're gonna add a new book. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in my third book in my My Buddy Knows series, which is My Buddy Knows Colors and Shapes. Now, remember, before you set your book to live, make sure that your ebook is not enrolled in the KDP Select program. Because with KDP Select, your ebook has to be exclusive with Amazon. My books are out of it, or at least this particular book is, and so I'm good. The first thing we're gonna do is we need to upload our book file. And if you just hover over this question mark, you'll see that they accept doc, docx, RTF, as well as a formatted EPUB file. Go to browse, can find my file, which is right here, double click it, and it will start to upload it. And then you get a check mark when it's all done. Now to expedite things, what I always do is I have an Excel spreadsheet where I keep the title, the subtitle, uh, basically all my metadata. It's off screen, but I'm just gonna copy and paste that over. I'm gonna do my title. I don't have a subtitle, so don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna do a series. It is the My Buddy Knows series. As you can see, it already had one in there because I've uploaded the other books. If it was a new series, you would just click on this and click on add series, and then you would type in the new series name. The volume number for this one is three. Now the description. This is one of the things that is so good about draft to digital as opposed to KDP. Obviously, first of all, draft to digital goes to a lot more places, but the description area. Instead of having to learn HTML, I can just copy and paste my text and I can go through. And as you can see, this one I actually copy and pasted it from the Amazon page. And so it already has the bolds, the spacing and everything. I'm just gonna go and remove some of these spaces. Um, I actually like that down there. Like it's so much easier. So if I wanna underline today, I just highlight it and I click underline and there we go. Now it's underlined. So, so much easier than having to learn HTML. The publisher, in this case, it's gonna be me. If it's gonna be somebody else, you just add a publisher. ISBN, if you leave it blank, you'll get a free draft to digital provided ISBN. Here are your BISAC subjects, pretty much identical to what KDP has because it's international. So you just go through, pick which ones are relevant to your particular book. Because I said juvenile, it's gonna ask me for an age range. I'm just gonna say three to five. Scrolling back up here, you've got your language, you've got your release date, when you want your book to go live. So let's say that you are in the KDP Select program and it's not, you've already deselected the box, but it's not gonna be done until November 13th. You can actually go in here and set the date for November 13th or November 14th just to be safe. And that way you can have it all ready but it won't actually go live and propagate until you're officially out of the KDP Select program. So you don't have to wait until you get out of it before you start doing this process. You can have everything done and it will just automatically kick in. Okay, so then we have the author, the contributors, whatever you want. I'm just gonna, I can type in here, I can add another contributor. I can click the drop down box and select, you know, how they contributed. If I made a mistake, I can just hit the X and delete it. Search terms, these are your keywords. You can select anywhere up to 10 different search terms. Each site that they go out to accepts a different number. 
So you wanna make sure that the most important, most relevant keywords are at the top of your list. Okay, so I'm good for now. I'm gonna hit save and continue. Now it's time for me to upload an image. Just go to browse. It's gonna to default to the folder you were already in before, which is good because that's where my picture is. Now this is great. Let's say you're not doing a children's book and yours is a novel or what have you. It actually will go in and it, the system tries to read and determine where your chapters are based on the header format. So if you have header one, header two, it will try to determine which are your chapters and it will list them here. Now, if it didn't select it correctly, you can just say, help, these aren't my chapters and you can actually go through and, and deselect the ones that are not. Over here, you have your back end matter. If your book doesn't have a title page and you click this box, they will add a title page for you. Same thing for a copyright page and a dedication page. Mine has all those, so I'm not gonna select them. Now here's what I love, the promotional pages. Promotional pages are great because as you, if you hover over this, you'll see it, but basically, if I select this box, there will actually be a spot in the ebook where it will direct people to the other books that are uploaded by me. And I can select the location to be at the beginning of the book, at the end of the book, or both spots, which I usually will do both. If you select this box, then anybody who downloads your book can actually sign up to be alerted every time you upload a new one onto draft to digital I always select that one. And then if you wanna include a teaser for another book, you can actually click teaser, click the teaser book from the list of books that you've already uploaded. So it will actually give them a slight teaser into the next book in the series, if you're doing a series. Since this is, it's a series, but not relevant to this, it's not like a novel, I'm gonna leave that. If you want to set up an about the author or an about the publisher biography page, you can do that and just select this and that will also be included in the ebook. I'm just going to click save and then this is gonna give me an overview of what my book's gonna look like. You can actually select the different formats that you want it to look like. You can enable drop caps if you're doing novel or something along those lines. There's different styles that you can pick, whether it's a romance or science fiction book. Oh, nonfiction. So I'm just going to do all purpose. Now, here's another great thing about Draft to Digital, especially if you're doing a book that is uh, a novel or something like that. You can have the system format it for you and literally download a Mobi file, download the EPUB file, download a PDF file, absolutely free and not actually publish your book through draft to digital So you can use their formatting software, make sure it looks the way you want it, and then download the files that you need. Again, you don't actually have to publish through draft to digital Just one more way that draft to digital is showing you that they really care about us as the indie author. Once you've reviewed your manuscript and you prove it, you just click this little box, click save and continue. Some of you may get this alert about the print version. I actually have been approved to use the draft to digital print beta. If you're interested in my input on that, you can message me in the comments and maybe I'll do a video about that. But for now, I'm gonna skip it since a lot of people don't have it. Now it's time to pick your price and my price is going to be $2.99. And if I select this manage territorial prices, I can actually go in and change all of the prices as I want to, but they all look good to me. Um, uh, maybe indies I'll change. Uh, I like things to end in like either 49 or 99, 97, something like that. So we'll just make this um, 49. Everything else looks like nice round numbers. Um, and this one I'll change to 99. Okay, apply. And now it's time to go through and check out my different stores. Um, as of right now, they're selected for Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, Tolino. Amazon is not selected. And because I have mine through KDP, I wanna leave it deselected. These are subscription services. And these will tell you what the projected royalties will be for all of these. So um, on a $2.99 ebook, I'm getting about a buck 80 for each format. That's not too bad. 
I'm going to leave all these selected because I want to go to all of them. Now the library price. Library price is typically auto-generated, but you can go in and change it if you want. Some places do it on a cost per checkout and others do it on a one copy, one user amount. So the great thing about the checkout is you're actually getting paid every time someone checks out your book. So even though they may only have one copy at that library, you still can get a significant amount of money. I mean, that's definitely pays better than, than a per page. And especially for a book this size, this, size, this book is only 30 pages long. And so, you know, at less than half a cent with KDP Select, you know, I'm getting a far better amount than I would if I stayed in the KDP Select program. Plus I'm in so many different avenues. I'm actually gonna research my prices right now before I decide to pick the Hoopla option. I'm not doing it for print, so I'm leaving it blank, but if I was gonna do for print, I would put my print price here and then I would just select this. And as you can see, um, it right now it's only going to Amazon and expanded distribution. That's one of the reasons why I'm not doing a print version because I already have it in Amazon and the expanded distribution. So obviously you don't want it in the same place twice. I can decide whether I want to remember my store preferences, which that's why most of these were selected because I've already selected those previously and set them as my store preferences. You can just click this box or deselect it if you're still testing things out. And then I click submit. I just go to this rights confirmation. Yes, I'm the original creator. Um, I have secured rights or this book is public domain. I'm the original creator. And then I just click the confirm that I have all the rights necessary for, to make the content cover and all other data provided by the available marketing distribution, blah, blah, blah. And then publish my book. As it starts to propagate the different avenues that the book is in, like for example, uh, 24 symbols, Kobo, then you're going to get an email every time it gets added and accepted to one of those platforms. So when it gets accepted by you know, Apple for iBooks, I'll get an email about it. When it gets on 24 symbols, I'll get an email about it. So it kind of keeps me in the loop. Some systems are going to take longer to propagate than others, but you're done. This is really all you have to do. Another great thing is you can actually start on your audiobook from this exact same window. Just right here, start an audiobook. They do it through Findaway Voices. I'll do a whole nother video on Findaway Voices. But you can do that all from here. You can see your book details. Here's one of my favorite things about draft to digital It's this right here, this books to read.com. Now mine's not active yet because I just uploaded it. But once you get that first email that it has propagated to one of these sites, this one link will have the link for all of these sites in it. So you can just supply in inside your book or on your website, this one books to read.com link and it will have all of your links right here for all the different sites that it's been sent out to. So that way, if someone is getting it on, you know, from Apple books, they can click on the books to read, see the Apple books link and get your book from there instead of having 10, 15 different links on your website. Also, if you remember, I did the also buy option and put that in my book. What that does is not only does that show them a list of all the other books that I have uploaded, but it gives them a link based on the system that they're already in. So for example, if someone is reading this particular book through Rakuten's Kobo and they go to the also buy link, it will show them the Rakuten Kobo link to my other books, as opposed to just showing them all the links. It shows them the link for the system that they're already in. Another great feature of Draft2Digital.